In this video, I'm going to start putting the strings on the violin. I'm going to be fitting the pegs and fitting the sound post on the inside. I don't have all of the final fittings that are going to be used eventually. Um, like the chin rest is not finished and uh, my friend Mick Loveland from the local violin shop will be making a final bridge for it out of uh, local woods. Um, however, I do want to get the strings onto the violin as soon as possible because when you first string up an instrument, the tensions from the strings uh, get transferred into the body and everything kind of settles and the sound changes a lot. Um, so you end up doing uh, quite a lot of adjustments um, early on. So I want to get that process started as soon as possible and I'm going to be using some temporary fittings. Fitting the pegs fitting starts the peg with starts taking the with shanks down to size using a set of these, these peg shapers, uh, which are just glorified pencil shapers. sharpeners. This little, this little device, device has a saw blade a saw cut and <coughs> it cuts top, a little so groove up next to the collar so that the, collar. the uh, pencil sharpener doesn't blow off the top of the collar, which can happen quite easily. So you just work your way down through the set of shapers until you've got down to the shank size that you want. And there's the manzanita pegs. Shanks turned down to size, oiled and polished with beeswax, ready to fit. To make the peg holes large enough, I use a reamer that has the same taper on it that the peg shaper does. As I set the pegs in further, I'm going to keep checking them for square, make sure they're going in straight in all directions. And at the moment, that top left peg, the A peg, is drooping slightly in this direction. So I'm going to compensate for that as I make the holes larger. By pulling the reamer towards me or pushing it away from me, I can change the angle at which the peg goes into the peg box. And at this point, um, I've done most of my corrections and I'm just looking for the depth trying to get them all the same distance. So I'm just measuring that here. Now the pegs are all set in, equal distance, and now they're ready to be trimmed. Now I'm going to mark the length for the peg. I'm just sawing off the excess at my score line. And now I'm doming the ends using a file and inserting it in and seeing how much is sticking out. Once that's done, I'll sand them with uh, several grades of sandpaper ending up with a fine grade and some oil and polish it on my pants. And I like the domed ends of the pegs to be just emerging from the hole. And that is a very handsome set of pegs. Thank you, Kalia. Today I'm going to be fitting the sound post. That's a little stick, a little dowel that's cut to wedge in between the top and the back standing just behind the treble bridge foot and um, it, uh, it's just wedged in there and what it does is it anchors one of the feet so that uh, when the bridge vibrates um, one of the foot is fixed and the other can vibrate twice as much get more power that way uh, the post is just a, a push fit in there and you can actually move it around and um, the position that it sits in relative to the bridge affects the um, some some of the resonances it's on, on this principle so if this is the fan post and this is the bridge if, if I move it away it resonates at a lower frequency so there's a sound adjustment 
Um, usually it's made of pine or spruce. Um, of course, this time I'm using redwood. And uh, here I go. I started the sand post with a 6.5 millimeter thick strip of redwood. And I split it along its length to make sure that the grain was running straight. I squared that piece off to 6.5 millimeters. And then I turned that square into an octagon and the octagon into a dowel. And yeah, finally gave it a sanding with some of the horsepower yet to see them. The sound post is fitted inside the body relative to the position of the bridge. So the first thing to do is to locate the bridge where you want it. And normally that's going to be in the center of the F holes. So I'll mark that position with tape. Then I cut an angle onto the end of the sound post and that angle is to fit it inside the arching on the inside of the instrument. Um, I already have fitted a sound post to this instrument previously so I have an idea of the angle I need and I'm just copying the angle of the previous sound post. Um, so once I think I've got that right um, I stab it onto the sand post setter and that's a little tool that allows me to reach the thing in through the F hole and uh, wedge it hopefully into the correct position inside. And when I say the correct position I'm talking about within about a quarter of a millimeter because that will definitely make a difference in the sound of the instrument. And when I think I've got a good fit and a good position I'm going to check it visually through the end pin hole and also using a dental mirror to see the far side of it. That's a pretty good fit. And here's the luthier's eye view of the sound post. So it's just a wedge fit between the top and the back. There's no glue and you can actually tap the post and move it into different positions and that will change the sound of the instrument. 